Hey Church, great to be doing devotions with you today. And right now we are looking at key relationships in the Bible. And today we're going to be looking at Saul and David. You can find out about the relationship in a few books, various books in the Old Testament. There's a lot documented about uh, David and how he feels, the things that go on with him and Saul. You can find that in Psalms. But today we're going to be looking at just the thing I want to highlight is going to be found in 1 Samuel 18. So I encourage you to go away and have a read of that and that will give you a little bit of insight into Saul and David. Now I just want to warn you that this relationship, there is not many warm fuzzies about it. Definitely is not a Disney uh, story kind of relationship. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Saul, he was king and he was also the father-in-law to David. So David had married one of Saul's uh, daughters. Now, when you read this, the, their entire relationship really is just a missed opportunity. And to be honest, it's really quite sad. This relationship could have been filled with great shared exploits that they did together, one where there was mentorship, exchange of wisdom, affirmation, just that sense of fathering. But instead, this whole relationship is dominated by jealousy and comparison. Now, David had just killed Goliath, and on the way back from the battle, the people are all singing his praises. They, he is their hero. And pick up here in 1 Samuel 18, verse 8. And we learn pretty quickly that Saul is not happy about this at all. It says, Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. See, Saul's allowed David's uh, success to rob him of a healthy and loving relationship. Instead of championing, coaching and cheering David on, saying, come on, you can do this, um, he allowed himself to be just tormented by jealousy. Now this jealousy took a hold of him. It meant that he lived his entire life from this moment on, really, a uh, life filled with anger, resentment, bitterness, and his whole existence became consumed with actually killing David. Church, I want to encourage us today, do not let jealousy and comparison rob us of the incredible relationships that God has given us. It really is so easy to compare uh, ourselves to others. I think especially in this day and age with social media, we can spend our time just comparing and looking at other people. It's so easy to get jealous of, you know, what people have, you know, the lifestyle they have, the family they have, the, the job title they have, the role that they have, how they look. It's so easy to get consumed by this. But we have to be people that ruthlessly kill comparison. That we do not allow the devil a foothold in this area and, you know, to take over. Because otherwise, like Saul, if we don't kill it, then we too can be consumed by it, it will take over, it becomes all consuming and ultimately it robs us of the great relationships that God has given us. And I reckon that we can become jealous, we can compare for the relationships that we have that we hold at a distance and sometimes we don't even know the people, it's just people that we see, categories of people on social media. But often also it can be those people that we have closest to us, our closest friends, our families, maybe even our spouse. And I encourage us to be ruthless with killing comparison and jealousy. And I just want to encourage you with a few things to do this week that I think will help us. Firstly, I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to identify any relationships where we struggle with this. Then once we've identified it, I want us to do three things. Firstly, let's take it to God and ask for forgiveness. Secondly, Let's pray for these people. Now, I know this might be hard, but I want us to pray for them. Even pray for those areas that we're jealous of or the areas that we compare. And thirdly, I want you to find a way that maybe you can encourage these people this week. And honestly, if we can really do this, then it will bring you freedom. And also, it's going to really help us bring build strong healthy relationships. We're called to be each other's biggest cheerleaders, biggest set, uh, source of encouragement. And I think if we can do these things, then we're going to make sure that we kill jealousy comparison and not allow the devil a foothold. So I encourage you to do that this week, church. I'm going to be praying for you. Uh, I love you and I will see you real soon.